If people meet me at parties, they normally ask me what I do, and I say I'm a researcher, I'm a scientist. Um, and if I said I was a physicist, people would sort of slowly back away. Um, but no. <laughs> so hi, my name's Susie, and I design particle accelerators. So a particle accelerator is a machine designed to take either atoms with the electrons stripped off, so what we call ions, or the particles inside the atom themselves, so electrons or protons, and give them energy, increase their speed, and the main way is using electric fields to accelerate and magnetic fields to bend and control the particles. So the Earth has a magnetic field and coming from the Sun is charged particles. And actually the only reason that those charged particles don't irradiate us is because the Earth's magnetic field uses exactly the same principle and bends them away from us and actually protects us almost like a magnetic shield around the Earth. So that same principle in physics, that's called the Lorentz force, that a charged particle in a magnetic field gets bent. Um, and so we're using exactly that same principle, but to bend particles around in an accelerator. And if you take an electric field, electric potential, and you sit a charged particle within that, it will feel the electrical force, which will move it from one side to the other. So you know, light charges repel and opposite charges attract. We literally just use that basic principle to give a particle a small kick or a push. And if you do that enough times over and over, um, it gains more and more energy. I think there is a, a creative process that people go through when they design accelerators. Often the design of an accelerator starts with one person and their concept. Most particle accelerators really do have a recipe. So there's five ingredients. There's the particles, where you get those from, how you make them. There's giving it energy. There's some sort of acceleration mechanism. There's control, so that's usually the magnet system, so how you control and organise the beam of particles. There's collision, which not all accelerators are colliders, as in beam-on-beam beam colliders, but we usually use the beam for something. So we usually collide it either with a fixed target or even into a person's body or just onto some kind of sample or screen. And then there's detection. There's no point doing all of that unless you can actually measure what's going on with the beam at the end of the day. There are lots of different types of particle accelerators, but we can classify them into three main categories. The first one is a linear accelerator, so as the name suggests, it's a straight line. Most commonly, they're used for radiotherapy in hospitals, so accelerate electrons and using those generate X-rays and then the X-rays are used for cancer treatment. The other two types of accelerators are circular. Probably most common one in terms of numbers, it's called a cyclotron. It's a compact, sort of relatively old style accelerator in which the particles start in the centre and as they gain energy, they spiral outwards. To reach higher energies, we use a machine called a synchrotron. And a synchrotron has to keep both the electric and magnetic fields perfectly synchronised with the particles as they increase in energy. And that's where it gets its name from. We have two big synchrotrons on site at the Rutherford Appleton lab. One's the Isis neutron and muon source, and the other one is the diamond light source. The Large Hadron Collider, the world's biggest accelerator, is also a synchrotron. I spent three months working at CERN as an undergraduate student. The first time I went out there, this thing was so big and so complex. I was kind of an ant in an anthill, as it were. And I just thought, this thing's never going to work. And yet, you know, they switched the Large Hadron Collider on and it worked as smoothly as I've ever seen any accelerator start up. It's an incredible machine, an incredible team of people. Usually there's such long-term projects that in some accelerator control rooms, if you go in there, there's normally a, a series of either corks or empty bottles and have written on them, you know, first beam or, you know, first user cycle. When you reach a major milestone, I think the bottle of champagne is quite a, um, it's quite a ubiquitous thing in my field. So we, we don't drink much champagne, but we do, <laughs> we do like to wreck a bottle when 20 years later you get the beam on. Yeah. <laughs>